Now, I just want you to imagine that you're in a, a tiny little red boat. It's a, it was a good size to probably go up a creek and go fishing. A good size to maybe head out in the harbour. I'm not sure it's really the sort of thing that you'd want to be heading into international waters with, though. That is, unless you happen to be a little bit crackers, or maybe just crackers himself, who joins us now. Hello, how are you going? Good morning, Kate. Good to be here. I'm talking to Craig Hand, who many people know as crackers. You might have heard from him before. He's uh, certainly been about town and has had a bit of um, a profile for his help uh, to a particular tribe in PNG, which all happened as a result of a trip in this little red boat. But uh, in case you haven't met him yet, Craig, would you be able to explain to us how you ended up going to PNG in your tiny little red boat? Okay, yes. Um, around about five years ago, I planned to do uh, something different with my life, and I uh, had always thought of Mount Everest because everyone says that's that's a big challenge in life, but many people have done that. That would be a challenge in a little red boat. Uh, it would be, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I uh, thought of other things that that may not have been done and um, I looked at going to another country from Australia in the smallest boat possible and um, I chose New Guinea and I wanted to cross Thor Strait so I planned it for about 15 months and um, made a beeline up the east coast uh, with my boat and motor and um, uh, in tow behind uh, my uh, Pajero. Um, had a good look at it for a couple of days and put the boat in the water and um, basically just took off. Right. <laughs> So, just had your little compass set to north and went for it. Something like that, yeah. Tell me about this particular village that you ended up uh, helping that you have a, a connection with now. Uh, yeah, I came across this village. Um, I did strike some trim and tilt problems uh, when I crossed Hall Strait, so I, I sought a bit of um, uh, shelter up a river in New Guinea and um, made some... Um, rather unique repairs to the um, to my situation. <laughs> what are you talking about there? Uh, well, I couldn't get my motor back down in the water. The trim until it wouldn't allow it. I wasn't sure what was wrong and I spent a couple of hours looking at every um, thing that could have went wrong and, and the scenario before I made my decision to um, take the trim until it off. Uh, my previous motor didn't have one, so I just presumed if I took it off, I should be fine. But it was difficult. I couldn't get the bottom bolt out. So um, I could get the top bolt out and cut the wire and let the unit hang underneath the boat between the hull and the motor which um, impeded my steering and also uh, the motor would have pushed it through the hull eventually so I had to free up some space there so the motor could work efficiently so I folded up a baked bean tin and wrapped it in a face washer and I folded up a sardine uh, tin, tin lid and wrapped that in a pair of old jocks <laughs> and I lifted the motor and wedged it under each side of it to free up the space and that allowed me to get uh, up the creek in New Guinea and um, did a couple of days of testing and threw the line out while I was relaxing and um, then basically uh, I thought I'll, I'll be able to come home like that um, but I did see a large tower and I thought I'd better check in to uh, this tribe and see if I can call up um, some help in Australia, or just let them know that I'll be coming home uh, with a so slight problem. you had no particular intentions of uh, going to this tribe. This is completely accidental as a result of the uh, sardine tin wrapped in jock sort of repairs that you've done to your boat and thinking that you needed to uh, to let people know where you were. Who did you end up meeting? Um, well, I, I uh, basically went to shore and I realised soon that, um, uh, that things were not... Um, as, as it seemed. Um, so it took about uh, 10 minutes or so to get a um, translator and they also rounded up the king of the tribe and all the elders and we went for a meeting and uh, we swapped stories on how I came to be there and uh, my adventures and they told me about their existence and um, we got along pretty well and they took me and showed me a few things uh, around, their, around their village and um, took them for a boat ride up to a, another special place that they had. Um, they wanted to show me a tree with all marks and carvings on it. Um, and then they asked if I could help them and I said I couldn't. Uh, they're so far out of the way for me. Um, 
it, it, it's a one-off in life that um, I turn up. So I said I'd try and get them some help when I got back to Australia by perhaps telling a newspaper what um, what sort of help they need, and that would be the best I could do. But um, after I left the village and I set about crossing back across to straight to Australia, I went through some pretty rough seas, especially the second day. I spent eight and a half hours trying to get to an island, and I went through. 32 knot winds plus gusts and rain and I just thought no one's ever going to get to um, that tribe to help them. There's no airport there, there's no no roads, no no one really goes there much so um, I just thought I w I'd like them and um, got along with well with them I thought um, I'd like to go back so I, I um, a lot of media were chasing me after my first uh, crossing but um, I wasn't too worried about that but then I, I formed the um, Friends of Papua New Guinea charity and now yeah I'll come and talk to Kate, I'll talk to anyone about it, I think um, people are interested in what, what's happening over there and uh, basically I, I've just put on a promotional documentary, I've, I've put that on my Facebook site, the Friends of Papua New Guinea site, I just uploaded it yesterday, it's a 15 minute promo documentary on the basics of what I did on my last trip. But this is all working towards the next trip, which you're going to uh, head off on fairly shortly, yep. and for which you're raising money. You are um, holding a special gig as a result of this and managed to get mental as anything. Yeah, I thought um, just to increase the profile of this trip, I'll um, have a good send off. And I thought, what, um, what more could I do than get one of Australia's greatest bands ever to come to Darwin and play to an exclusive audience at the uh, Trailer Boat Club in Darwin? to see that live at the trailer club, the trailer boat club, then uh, you can uh, find, you can buy tickets to that event at the venue. It's on Saturday the 28th of April. And there's a whole bunch of other local bands playing as well, and bands from this far south of this Tennant Creek too. Uh, so a good mix of territory artists as well as mental as anything. It's all about raising money for Crackers Next Trip to PNG. 
what are you going to what are you going to achieve out of this? What's the aim, crackers? Um, well, basically, the money's not for for me. Uh, it's for the charity. So um, I'm looking at uh, hoping to spread um, child sponsorship in New Guinea. Um, I'm starting with this village, and I hope to um, widen that um, through. Uh, I hope to spend a, about two months in New Guinea to um, visit some other tribes in the area and hope to expand. So um, uh, that's that's the focus of it. Also, health and education. I've got. So, what do you mean, child sponsorship? In, in the same way that the major charities do child sponsorship in, you know, Asia or Africa, for example. Is that um, what you're about? One's very similar, except um, there's no charges, um, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, um, from as little as. Seventy odd dollars a year. You can sponsor a kid with uh, clothing. Oh, sorry, not clothing, but um, food and education and housing. So um, that's cheap as chips, and it really helps them. So um, a lot of the kids over there don't get a chance at education, and um, I'm just trying to help them out a little bit. Um, I've got a website, uh, Friends of Papua New Guinea, which you can look up and hit the child sponsorship button it tells you a bit of a story about schools it's a tricky thing getting into something like this though isn't it because the the um, community help sector is huge and so trying to figure out the best way to help these uh, people in these uh, tribes that haven't really had much contact is a, a big responsibility to to take on isn't it uh it is i I just look at it as, some, as something to do and um yeah i try not to i've, I've set it up in a way where i don't <clears throat> have to feel uh, too much into it. I'm, I'm just basically um, uh, trying to make, <clears throat> with the modern technology these days, it's quite easy to um, set up something like this. And um, I've, I've just done it, so I'm just uh, basically giving people an opportunity to help other people out. For more information about uh, the gig that will feature Mentors Anything, just plug Mentors Anything into uh, at the Trailer Boat Club into a search engine. I'm sure it will come up, but it's on Saturday the 28th of April and uh, tickets are available at the venue. Yeah, um, if people want to follow my adventures, it's going to take about six months. You'll be able to follow me uh, live. We're setting up a Cracker Tracker unit and you can follow my uploads, YouTube, Facebook and photos. Um, more to come soon. Thanks so much for speaking with us, Craig Hand. You're listening to Mornings. Mm.